Hey there, uh, this is uh, www.andrewmartinmusic.com and this is the first video from the Hippie Cottage. Um, so yeah, four years of involuntary van life has come to a temporary end. Now, in this one, I have to preface by saying this is not a peer-reviewed scientific paper about climate change. <clears throat> CC 33. <clears throat> no, it's not that. Okay, this is um, a guy with an opinion about the weather in the Fraser Valley, British Columbia. So that includes Vancouver, where I spent the winter. And it's within a very specific time frame. It's between Thanksgiving of... 2023 and the coming up uh, summer solstice in 2024. So that's the the specific parameters of a guy with an opinion talking about the weather here. Now, uh, I've lived in my van all winter. I think that's the third or fourth winter in the van. So you sort of become very aware of the weather. Um, and what I can tell you is that since Thanksgiving of last year till you know a few days from now, it's it's been cool or cold. So far this year, maybe there's been four days where it got up to seventy degrees uh, in late April, early May. Um, now the one thing I will say is that through this winter, I would say there was generally less rainfall than many prior years. But that doesn't change the fact that it's been cold and damp and rainy for what amounts to, count the months, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, 10 months of chilly, damp, cold weather. Um, so, you might ask why I'm talking about this. Well, because when there's three days of hot weather where it gets up to 80 degrees, the media is going to go into a frenzy about climate change. There was a time in this country where you could enjoy summer and have a nice summer, but that's no longer the case. Um, so, you know, basically summer has now turned into a media frenzy of paranoia and, uh, you know, fear, fear mongering. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wish it wasn't the case, but that's just the way it is now. And, you know, it's not, it, it's not the only um, arena where there's sort of like a problem between a human being's lived reality and scientific narratives from the state. Um, in this case, you know, there's the conflict of my personal experience with weather as, as compared to the state scientific uh, agenda with climate change. And the other place where you know you get this same similar type of discrepancy is in the ridiculous debates about you know the Earth and what it's shaped like. Um, you know, there's a fact that there's no human being that has ever experienced. Um, the velocities that modern science says the Earth is traveling at as it spins and as it spins around the Sun, as it spins around the Milky Way galaxy. Um, you know, again, this is, our lived experience is at odds with modern science and what it tells us. And it creates, you know, I think it, it's fair to say it creates a kind of cognitive dissonance you know, um, when, when live realities differ so much from 
what's considered professional consensus uh, within scientific uh, uh, communities. And the third one, and I'm just going to name three, I could go many, many more. Um, I, during the, the pandemic, um, I lived a couple of blocks away from Vancouver General Hospital. And uh, ironically, it was the first time I actually liked Vancouver since, you know, 1984, 1985. I got there in 79 thought I died and went to heaven after growing up in Toronto um, and started to hate it by 1986 uh, when the billionaires just went into overdrive um, and in my opinion have ruined the city. Um, so uh, where was I here? Okay so it, it was only a five minute walk over to VGH emergency for me and I, I remember how surreal it felt. I go, in a humorous kind of way, I, hey, for, for the first time in a long time, I like Vancouver again because the streets are empty. Uh, but my point here is that the VGH emergency through March and April, May, was a ghost town. You know, like, is it just me? But if you're going to shut down civilization, is it just too much to ask to see some zombies? You know? I mean, when you're going to go to that extreme over what amounts to a cold and flu virus, um, it would have been nice to see some evidence of it, some real, some, just a guy with an opinion going and saying, oh my God, this is really bad. But again, this isn't what happened. Um, in fact, for myself, I didn't sneeze through years of the COVID, and I was washing my hair uh, because I lost everything uh, because of the COVID policies and I was washing my hair in minus 20 and I have videos documenting this I think they're even on YouTube uh, you know where I'm washing my hair in minus 20 in a mountain stream and uh, did I get sick? No, I didn't even sneeze um, but don't, don't miss the point here there's just a uh, uh, a major, major discrepancy, uh, in my opinion, far too often between someone's lived experience and the official narratives of the nation state. Now, maybe it's all just coinky co dinky. Um, I'm willing to concede that, but man, is it annoying. Um, I I'm sitting here in my new little hippie apartment and I got the heat on. You know, it's like, it's supposed to be summertime in a few days. And it's, it's, it's been like this, again, since October of last year. It's just been cold, damp. And, you know, one, one of the things that bothers me about the media frenzy, um, I remember going back to the 80s where the radio station Seafox in Vancouver was the DJs every day. This is, you know, day 110 without rain. This is day 115 without rain. So, I mean, it was hot and it was sunny for months and months and months on end here. And I don't remember any forest fires in the news or very few. It, it, it took until, you know, the early 90s, I think it was 94, where the fire started making the news here. Um, now, I'm not saying there were no fires in those days. What I'm saying is there were sure a lot less of them and there was not the media frenzy um, that you have today um, about, uh, you know, fires. And there's never, it's always, the media is always focused on one point. Um, and it's just like human caused climate change. Yeah, and it was the, um, within minutes, it was the Arabs who did it, you know. Um, the same sort of idea. Uh, so, you know, this is all very, very disconcerting. Like, you're not going to hear about corporate malfeasance in the forests in British Columbia and mismanagement of the forest. You're not going to hear about 
you know, government agents who are actually committing arson. You know, you're just not going to hear about that. That's that's, you know, why would they do that? Well, because there's an agenda at play, and uh, this has very little to do whether any of the science regarding climate change is accurate or not. These psychopaths might do that anyway, regardless. Um, but, uh, you know, take some of that with a grain of salt. I'm just trying to make a point here uh, about, you know, how frustrating it is that, uh, you know, the lived experience of the guy on the street, you know, has to be, always be so incongruent with official narratives. You know, it's just like, yeah, um, that's the weather forecast from um, the Fraser Valley, uh, British Columbia. Cold, damp, rainy for 10 months, and I predict another uh, media frenzy if we get seven days of 80 degree weather, which again used to be the norm in the 80s. Uh, just months and months and months of endless hot weather and uh, n no frenzy. I mean, people enjoyed their summers in those days. Um, and now it's just a big guilt trip. So, yeah, um, that's uh, Andrew Mark Music uh, from the Hippie Cottage. Um, it was, it's kind of nice to have landed, you know, just a brief take on band life here. Um, who's funding it? Who are the influencers that are funding it and why? You know, that one person has to be homeless in a country with this much wealth is uh, disgusting. There's, there's not really words to describe how despicable it is. Um, you can see my blog, uh, The Problem of Money, and all the associated links. Uh, where I cover this ground and how easy it would be um, to solve this problem. But of course, the people that are running this shit show don't want it solved. They want it this way. It serves their agendas. Um, okay, so probably much more of um, these type of videos coming from the Hippie Cottage. Um, AndrewMartinMusic.com uh, I don't know what to say now. It's, it's like, love ya, get the fuck out of here. <clears throat>